my brother, David Broza, is here, and uh, we have experienced, experienced much. David is, uh, as was mentioned by Brian, was uh, born in Israel, and he lives now both in Israel and in the United States. And uh, in, in order not to start a long time ago, but to go right to where we are now, David, my brother, what are you doing in your life right now that you think is a healing, a, a healing action for you and for the people that you affect? Why is it that I am asking you this question? <laughs> <laughs> It's, uh, well, that's an easy question. Not sure that it's uh, an easy answer. Uh, Peter, you know, just so that everybody knows, you and I, we've had a very, very close and invigorating uh, relationship for the past 12 years or so. And uh, my, my attraction to what you do, besides the beautiful beauty of your music and the history of your music and, and so many, for so many years that I've known you, um, is one attraction and the other is the way that you've really conducted your life in trying to uh, lend yourself or actually lead a way, whether it's in the United States, whether it's in other countries, and of course also in the Middle East, the Israel and uh, the West Bank or the Palestinian Authority. You've really, um, I've watched you and closely since I've known you. So you've kind of mentored me in many ways because you're way heads up ahead of me, not because of your age, because of the so many years more experience that you have. Now, if you ask me today um, in the COVID times, and I have to place ourselves in, in the right moment where we live, no matter what the politics are outside, the COVID situation has affected, affected all our lives and our ability to also be as effective as we would wanna be in all the issues which are social issues. Now I'm primarily, I'm, I'm first of all, and first, uh, in any other way than any way possible, I'm a musician. I'm a musician, I'm an entertainer. Um, I live for that. I am used to doing approximately about 200 shows a year, meaning that I travel across the globe. And of course, I also spend half my time in, in Tel Aviv. So I, every month I spend many days there. And COVID has actually uh, brought me to an abrupt stop as it has brought you and many, many, and all our colleagues, uh, musician friends, and as, um, put us in a situation where we meet on Zoom and on Facebook and on YouTube as I've watched you night after night, giving us your history through music, which has been just motivating and, and inspirational. So to tell you that I can affect, effectively be part of a change that goes on today, I think it has been minimal because I'm used to being out there on the field. I'm a grassroots person. Where, and, and of course, primarily in Israel. And that means that I spend much of my time, as I showed in my project uh, five years ago called East Jerusalem, West Jerusalem, which wasn't a project, actually, it was a, an album, a beautiful album, which I brought Steve Earle, the great Steve Earle, to produce musically and also to be a middleman between me and whatever would happen on, in the studio as we were attracting Palestinian musicians and Israeli musicians under one roof. I spent a heavenly, uh, eight days and eight nights, almost like a Hanukkah miracle, uh, of which is tonight is the first candle lighting. So we spent eight days and eight nights under one roof. Um, what I'm trying to say is that these sort of acts where I'm physically present, make it possible to feel that you're contributing towards a change that will come sometime. And music is the first and foremost tool that I, I believe, which I have also full control of, uh, a full use of because of, I'm a musician, a singer songwriter, or as they mentioned, a troubadour. Um, it makes it very, um, very effective for me to be physically around people, sing songs, make them sing along with me, play along and create a harmonious environment and feeling. So COVID has really ruined and, and kind of put me at a, at a stop where I, there's a, you know, there's no way that I can, overcome the situation and find new ways of uh, advancing. However, it does enable us to search a little deeper and look for contacts around the world because everybody is, is at a stop. 
as a standstill. So we can communicate through emails, through WhatsApps, through Zoom, through all these ways, and try to build something that would make probably make uh, or be uh, more effective once the COVID has subsided and and we go back to you know reliving our once upon a time busy moving traveling life where we can actually mingle and mix around people this is the short answer to your question no i, I, I get it my feeling is david that um you, in a certain way you're selling yourself short because um when i i asked it because of the work that you are doing that we spoke about um and, and i feel that in this time when people are doing a, a re reset mm -hmm. about what matters to them for instance the album that you made of uh of instrumental music and you were practicing to get your your chops as as we say mm -hmm. the, the, for those of you who don't know that the chops are like your your musical technique uh able to play the complexity of these of these pieces of music that you wrote for the guitar i i i put that out to my you know group extended group of friends and they are they are so moved by it and i think that in non covid times they would not have had the luxury of listening to it for instance paul of peter paul and mary no paul stuckey he just flipped out and so many other people and i feel that this in this time is a huge contribution it's so unbelievable i don't even know if you and 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 there are other projects we want to talk about but if you can just play a little bit of that for people really? because yeah this is a this is i'm not telling you in a certain way for those of you that you know, there are guitarists who have emerged over the past, you know, 20, 30 years who have redefined the limits of, of uh, guitar playing in new ways. But David, in his particular style, in particular way, has no peer. Uh, I mean, there are there are other people in other who play in other idioms, but um, uh, I I just. I want uh, to take a COVID break and embrace <laughs> this. It's a spiritual That's thing good. to hear you do this and just take your time and let us do a COVID moment of absorbing this extraordinary wow. music. Yeah. Thank you, Peter. So, I mean, of course, to get your incredible um, uh, support and the love for this project warms my heart. And it's been so since I sent you my original first tapes of it. <clears throat> and I realized that, like, that there is an ear that would enjoy this. And you're right, it's, it's possible that these times, the COVID times, actually pieces of music without words, because I'm a singer songwriter, I normally have a lot of words and I have a lot to say in my songs. And yeah. not, to be, not to say one word and just play the story through a melody, that's, that's a big deal. And it does give you in the COVID times that ability to breathe and not constantly be fed by information because really we are fed through internet and through all that with information nonstop, suddenly there's music. So I, I see there's, there's something personal about this and very intimate, you're right. So this is not necessarily about putting uh, adversaries together and, and bridging over you know, people, to this, but it's about actually just spreading music regardless of who's listening to it and people can listen and hear it. Um, let's see. This is called Guitar Confessions. I'll play some of it because these some of these. David, are can long. you do one thing? Uh, bring your the, your uh, so people can see your playing. That's right. Okay. All right. That's I beautiful. hope they can hear it because Zoom is not <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's not great. Thank you. 
movement oh i i could have gone on for so long it's, you it's want me to continue incredible. should i continue yeah please be a just a joy to just uh, share this um, for so long and 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 because we are reassessing what is important to us at this time so many people have said you know I'm, I it's reframed a sense of what what is really meaningful to me in a, a terribly challenging time you know and this is this is to me a healing moment and a healing um, a healing that you are providing and um, I'm, I, I just I, I just think that it's turned a, a sow's ear into a silk purse in certain ways um, for part of what COVID is because it's we're going inside in another way. I know you were talking about another a project in terms of uh, uh, writing a, a vernacular liturgy. Of, well, uh, you know, that's true. Things, yeah. yeah, things are different. You know, um, yeah, I'm, I'm actually uh, indulging in things that I never did, never thought I would do ever in my life. And I'm having a great time at it. But to go back to the instrumental, you know, these past nine months of COVID, I have been indoors. Uh, nobody has to tell me to isolate myself because I have nowhere to go. I mean, I I sit it all day and I perform uh, to myself. You know, I practice for a good five, six, even more hours a day just to maintain the ability to play. Although I don't feel I'm getting any better, but I'm just maintaining whatever muscle work has to be 
maintained. And I'm, I'm, I think it's, it's also helping me get through these. I don't know how you do it, but I get through these times by performing to myself all these pieces and doing exercises. But when it comes to liturgy, you know, I, I was asked to write, rewrite music to old, old prayers, which we've known, Jewish prayers, which we've known all our lives. And um, it's interesting. At first, I wasn't, even, I wasn't even going to do that. And I let the email sit for a few months uh, in, in the box. But then I looked it up after some four months. And I guess I was, um, I was given a, um, a, an enlightenment an enlightening moment and I started writing music and nothing interfered with my writing in as far as old melodies coming in and suddenly forcing my, me to go somewhere which is familiar. Absolutely not. It was really interesting. It's been a really interesting process where I look at these melodies which I've known my father taught me and his father taught him generation upon generation and they're also familiar in the Jewish world and and I've rewritten all these melodies to create perhaps like um, a, a concert, which of course it is Jewish and it's what we celebrate. But since it's liturgy, it could be that it's actually universal because prayers have always been universal. Some of the greatest classical music was written as prayers and it gets celebrated by the Philharmonics and operas and choirs. Um, it's magnificent, you know? Um, and so I'm, I'm still in, uh, in new waters. So I'm not sure that I'm, I've got the full stroke, right? But I'm keeping my head above water and hopefully, <laughs> hopefully it's not gonna put me in a position where I don't understand why I got into it in the first place. But it seems um, very, very healing in a sense. In a world that I, you know, I feel that everything is stopped and has ended for me. And I'm of course watching the news and I'm searching for new ways to communicate with my audience and with communities and all that. But uh, indulging in writing new music has certainly been one of the best ways to, um, to get through these months, you know? Yeah, I, I agree. And I think that what you're doing is it corresponds to my, my way of answering the question when people speak and they say, how are we going to get out of this? And uh -huh. we have to say, well, what is this? And what do we want to get out of? I think that the essential reality is that besides COVID and besides the, uh, the, 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 the problems that beset us that are uh, structural in society and they are grave, um, that on a, on a person-to-person -person level, that the, the one thing we have to do if we're going to um, have any of these solutions that stick are uh, uh, what we have to do is, is reestablish a sense of our own vulnerability and compassion and empathy because that has been so skewered by a culture that has affirmed really um, blind alleys of uh, of cultural pursuit for of, of money of of uh, unearned fame of uh, material wealth of you know um, and the the idea of competition and winning and um, the meanness m e ness is as opposed to the us ness and what is it that what are the acts that reaffirm in our hearts which we must do the usness it is when i hear you play that it's it's like a number one it opens it opens my heart and it it, it moves me and all of a sudden i'm living mm. in a real way about something that you've created and it feels like you're saying when you play, I love you, you know, mm -hmm. and and that every moment where we say, this is an act of love, or this is an act of love, is a way to rebuild what has been uh, threatened and, and injured so greatly. And that's why I think that you're, you're creating that, that music, and also the idea of you're doing 
a, 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 a new language of, of, of the liturgy of these uh, is, could be such an act of, as you say, and the comparison between the writing of uh, the sacred music, you know, over the ages is, is mm -hmm. absolutely apt. So yeah, I, I love that. Well, I'll tell you something, uh, as, we, as you're speaking and I'm trying to see the value of music um, uh, on, on, in, in a society, in a social way, in an intercultural thing. So last week I had the incredible opportunity of meeting down in Israel. I was in Israel for three weeks and last week I actually dedicated to performing and I went down to the desert to what's called King Solomon's Mines, the ancient mines of King Solomon. And there, it was a very, very selective audience, which was all invited, maybe 50 people, but actually it was aired in Israel and it was aired in the Emirates and it was aired in Saudi Arabia and in Bahrain and Sky News and CNN, all that. But the beauty was that we met together. I, I was performing with an orchestra that's called Jerusalem East West. And it, that's a mixture of, of musicians who are Jewish and Arab and play or, or Jews who come out, came out of North Africa and play in the traditional North African way. We also call it Andalusi music, Al Andalus, which is actually part of the music that was curated and developed uh, during the, the, the golden ages of Spain before the Inquisition. So this is old traditions meeting with new. And my, the, the concept that we gave is a combination of my music, which is mostly Western music, almost the whole of it. I'm a Western kind of musician coming out of Israel though, um, but mixed with Arab music and North African music, the arrangements. And it was just a beautiful, it was a great meeting that we hadn't done in, in many, many months. I've given many concerts with this orchestra, but we haven't seen each other for a good 10 months, if not more. But what I'm coming to say is that when you play music, you cannot play out of harmony and you cannot drum out of rhythm. It all has to lock in. It has to lock in. There's a yin and the yang in every note and every tone. And that's the key. And the reason why music is such a beautiful tool for putting people together of all walks of life, all opinions, all cultures, enemies and foes and, and friends and together is because you cannot sing two voices unless together, unless they're in harmony. And in time, that's a commitment. It's not even a spoken commitment. It's a given, right? I'm, I'm right. Peter, Paul, and Mary. The beauty of Peter, Paul, and Mary. Absolutely. Those harmonies. So you took simple folk songs and created, if I had a hammer, okay? Wow. Yeah, that, was, that was nice. It was great when, you know, uh, Woody Guthrie or Pete Seeger sang it, Pete Seeger mostly. And suddenly you sang it in harmony, blowing in the wind. That harmony made those songs... First of all, that harmony brought more people together because that harmony resonates with everyone. Harmony resonates in general. I mean, these solo performers are amazing, you know, uh, but when you have harmony, there's nothing grander than that, especially if it's a trio or quartet singing in harmony, like the Beatles were with harmonies. So Peter, Paul, and Mary always come back to me. Um, so that is such an effective and evident tool and way of expressing oneself and at the same time conquering the, the dreams, bringing the dreams to reality. The dream that you have, that I have, that so many of our friends have, that I think every born child has to live in peace. Now, how do you define peace? Well, how do you define love? You know, there's 8 billion people in the world, 4 billion are gonna be married to other 4 billion. They're gonna find love. Love is a definition so generalized that everybody has to invent their own. And peace is that one of those equations and the way to bring those together that we can do, you and I and our fellow friends, the musicians, is actually to encourage people to be together and to play music. Um, one of my, one of my uh, recent projects, which I've dedicated a lot of time towards in the last two years, was to create a guitar that was good enough and affordable enough so I can produce thousands and thousands of guitars and give them to underprivileged kids around the world. In the United States, I've joined in with 
I've provided guitars to two organizations, which are in 3,300 schools in this country, in 43 states, um, called uh, Little Kids Rock from New York and Guitars in the Classroom from San Diego. And they actually dedicate themselves to teaching underprivileged kids in very, very difficult situations. They give them instruments. I give guitars. So you walk into a classroom with 24 kids and we provide 24 guitars. These are Spanish guitars, very much like my guitar. Here, I have one. I have one actually here. It's a guitar that we designed with a heart. I did it instead of a regular hole. Um, and it's the same size as mine, but fit. It, we, I did it especially so it would be right for a fourth grader to put his hands around. And it has really great sound and it's sturdy. It doesn't break easy, which a lot of cheap guitars do. It's a fantastic guitar. And we've also, we're, we're actually introducing this, this program also in, in Israel and in, in the Middle East. Uh, right now in, you know, in about a dozen schools and every classroom gets, every child in, in fourth and fifth grade get a guitar into their hands. And the reason I'm doing this and I'm wishing for this to succeed is not only because the effect that the guitar had on my life, I'm sure it had on your life, I know it has, is because it's such a simple way of, of transposing or changing a young person's ability to connect with himself and to be a better person around, you know, around other people. And it's a point of connection. And these kids, when they commit to these instruments, whether it's in the United States or right now in Israel, if they commit for two years, they get to keep these guitars forever for the rest of their lives. So that becomes their companion and that becomes a life changer. They don't have to become musicians. Many of them won't, but they'll be great engineers. They'll be great shopkeepers and they'll be great lawyers, whatever they are. And so this is like the next step uh, as far as I'm concerned in getting music into the hands of people who otherwise would probably be left behind in society because you know, the comfort zone, a person is comfortable with himself, he can make peace with another person. If he's having a hard time with himself, he looks down on himself, can't find a way to express himself, he might even be dangerous to himself or to those around him. I mean, there's so many things that one can do to help to improve one's lives, but I can only do it through guitar. And so my contribution, little contribution as it be, is this particular project. And that is that has really kept me very busy and now that I did an instrumental album, I can actually, mm, I guess, expose the depth that a, an instrument has, even if you don't sing, you know, if you just sure. play. I'm only in the beginning of this journey, mind you. I'm not, I never considered myself a guitarist. I'm always an accompanist of my own songs, an intricate way of playing, but never thought of myself as somebody who could play without singing or telling a story. And this well, is amazing. I have to tell you a, a, a story that is coincident with this. There's an entity called One Story at a Time that emerged about a year and a half ago after something that happened to me. Um, and it goes right into a situation where a guitar is is at the center of it exactly the way you're talking about it. Wow. I went down to a place called Casa Migrante in Tijuana, which is a men's shelter, perhaps the oldest one, uh, created in 1994 by a, um, a priest, and it serves the most needy, the most uh, challenged of the those who seek asylum and safety. And um, I went there to sing for them, and because I, you know, that's what that's what you do, you know, yeah. you know your, your mom went to the border and he sang and I went and I and I sang uh, Somos el Barco and If I Had Hammer and I sang and I told them that we loved them and that Americans do love them and that we wish them well and all those things and at the end of it somebody was there that was really moved by it and she uh, she she couldn't stay away. She went the next day back from Tecate, which was where we were in this health spa that's helped me to retain my youth, uh, <laughs> youthfulness, in, in, even in this era. And, uh, and out of that grew this organization. Now, interestingly enough, a person who 
has come on the board recently is Linda Ronstadt, and she oh, wow. has gone to Mexico and played because she also has this feeling about music and kids learning it, and she teaches it, and she's taught it, and she gave her a, a guitar like hers, not, not, <laughs> not like one it. of those handmade, uh, you know, right. <laughs> museum guitars, but to a girl, and there's a, 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 a film that was just made in which this girl sits there and plays um, green sleeves oh, wow. uh, on the guitar. It's a nylon guitar. And she, then she talks about it because what they are dealing with is they've run away from circumstances where their family members have been killed, where their, um, uh, the, their cartels that, that have... Uh, pursued them where they, they are desperate and of course they came to the border of the United States and they they were looking for uh, a solace they were looking for asylum which is internationally guaranteed and alas they were not given a chance but she when she plays this guitar I'm going to show you that piece if I could I would show it now to everybody who's watching is the essence of you see that she says when I play, I'm okay, I'm safe, and it's it's a yep. beautiful thing. So that is, yeah. You know, my my my. Uh, I'll just end this um, a little yeah, bit. Yeah. The, my ultimate dream now is uh, you've met my friend Saeed, who's from East Jerusalem, this Saeed Murad, prominent yeah. musician, Saeed Murad, yeah. amazing musician, and a good good friend. Um, so he has he's, he runs this beautiful studio where I did the album East Jerusalem West Jerusalem and hence the film, and I think that place is the most comfortable place for Israeli musicians and Palestinian musicians to meet and actually to experiment together. It's accessible, accessible for Palestinians from across the border, from the Palestinian Authority to come and not to feel that the, they're treading on on turf that is. You know, exclusively Israeli. It's it's it, right now. It's it's a area which is East Jerusalem, and we want to turn that into an internet, like an Israeli and a Palestinian Israeli music center. So officially, we would have to we would upgrade the studio, and everybody would want to record there. Everybody would meet under that pretext under the roof and create all these amazing associations, collaborations, and bring bring a new sound, a new tone to life, you know, not sound, a new tone, a new way of looking. Because when you work together, and Israelis and Palestinians don't meet enough together, certainly not in the arts, um, there's no meeting place. So it's essential for us to be able to create a community, uh, an area where we can communicate with each other and not through politics, through, the, through what we do is the music. Um, this is my ultimate, you know, goal in, in these times of, of um, I don't know what how to even uh, call them because they, even in Israel the, the the political uncertainty is just as as rough as here here it's not uncertain there's a there's a, a new president has been elected and, and in January things will kick into a new a new reality at least for a little bit um, so you know this is I think this this is this as far as the scope of what I'm trying to you know, we, all, we, we need to raise money for these sort of things, just like I do with the guitars, the One Million Guitar Project. Um, but that's, that's the, the side kick of it. I don't think it's the essential part. Making, find, funding it is important, but finding the right partners with which to work on all these projects, if it's the guitar project, if it's the creating the center around the studio uh, project um, and, and, and giving a, you know, a, a solid, place where these dreams can actually become reality you know you know what david i want to sh show this i have sent the uh the link to see your film east jerusalem west jerusalem when you did this which i think is 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 not a hypothetical description of but it is the actualization of how music can create peace I've sent this to so many people because I think, thinking about post-COVID times, that what what you have done here is going to be something that has to become uh, a, a tool throughout 
uh, you know, Israel, the United States, and the world, whereby the arts allow people to have not not find resolution about their differences in terms of political perspectives, but find just a way to humanize and. And just as you, I said you were loving when you were playing the guitar, yeah. to love each other. Yeah, we, we've got a clip, I know, because we. Ju I just thought of this before when we, right before the show, uh, the, 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 the Zoom, Zoom side chat, as it were. Um, and if we can show it now, okay. this is an album, but it is, a, it is the creation of a model of, and, and if you can, uh, if it, it's all right to give the link, to show the link mm -hmm. on the screen so that people can download it and put it in their lives. This will give you a COVID moment of, of not just hopefulness, but a sense of direction. So, um, Gabby, is that possible now to do that? Looks like it is. Yeah, but it's always a technical thing, and I, I go through it myself. What David Rose is trying to do in this project is such a beautiful thing to create a space. Let's start it again, Gabby. Yeah, yeah, start it again, 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 again. The Palestinian project means that you have to work a little harder to finding the right way for it to actually work. War defines me, whether I like it or not. You know, I'm kind of a peacenik because I grew up in a country of war. I believe there'll come a day when the lion and the lamb will lie down in peace together in Jerusalem. Everybody wants to have Jerusalem for them. This is my Jerusalem, this is his Jerusalem, this is our Jerusalem. They don't speak Hebrew and I don't speak Arabic, and we live in the same neighborhood. I want an album not just to be my story, I want an album to be every person involved should be part of the story, indented in the character of the album. Me as a kid, all of the Israelis that I've met were soldiers. There are soldiers everywhere, they have big guns, and I'm a little kid. It's not just the act of me singing, but it's me singing with you. <laughs> what I believe is is breaking down the walls that are in your mind, that are in your heart. All right. As much as I would like to hear you play the guitar for the rest of this time we're sharing, I would equally so want people to see this because this is not, you can only get the barest taste of it, but this is not um, a hypothetical. This is a fait accompli. It's like saying, well, I hope that this matchmaker will make a good match, and then let's see. And she's very <coughs> gifted at this. But in this case, let's see if peace, as you were defining it, peace is not an absence of war. Peace is an active state of people being in each other's hearts. And that's mm -hmm. what you created. And when it's done musically, it seeps in it's not a logical process. And that's what you've done here. If you people, is there any way, Gabby, to show this link to see this particular piece on the screen? Oh, oh, that's right. That isn't the link to that. No, no, the, the, the actual, the film you, can actually be seen. You can see it on Amazon uh, and there's other platforms. You just have to Google it and you'll find where it's being shown um, for sure. Now, you know, this, 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 um, this, the, these eight days and eight nights in the studio were just a taste, a glimpse of something that is much bigger. I mean, you know, my, my work in, in the studio in East Jerusalem and my collaborating with my good friends, the Palestinian musicians on music is something that's been ongoing for, you know, for decades now. So it's not something just for the sake of showing that music works. It works for me. It works for my colleagues, for my partners, for my friends. So it works. That's sure. it. And that's also what happens when you and I sing. You know, my new show, as a matter of fact, I have on December 23rd, I do my 25th anniversary of what I call the David Bros and Not Exactly Christmas show. And on that show, uh, I have different cultures playing with me. I have a 
these Cuban musicians, amazing Cuban musicians who, uh, you know, escaped from Cuba oh, and yes. came here, and and they they really play their music, and we turn my music into a more of a of a mix of a fusion of uh, Broza goes meets Cuba, you know them, and I have uh, my good friend musicians, you know, jazz musicians like Jay Beckenstein of Spira Gyra and uh, Julio Fernandez of Spira Gyra and Frankie Centeno, special guests who are coming to perform. That they can check out that that's going to be streamed across America. As a matter of fact, on December twenty third. Uh, unfortunately, I can't even I can't even have you on as a guest because we're we're COVID restricted. But yeah. that show will go on. It'll be a live performance. Anyway, yeah. why don't you play us a song, Peter? No, no, oh, no. We'll what I want to do is what I did with No Paul Stuckey the other day, and I want to do this with you. But I want to do it with a song that we've done from time to time. I know that you will have forgotten the lyrics because... I always do, yeah. Yes, but I want to do the song that is emblematic of what we've been talking about. It's Don't mm -hmm. Laugh at Me. Oh. And it was written by Steve Seskin and Alan Shamblin. And it's an anthem of, 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 of an educational initiative that you and I work together to bring to Israel. We also, with Amal Marcus, and with the uh, U.S. Embassy that was funding it, and we started with four schools, two in Petatikva and two in Lod, which is a, a, a very challenged area, but uh, two Palestinian schools, two Israeli schools, and it's now ad ad been adopted, this program, which uses music and also the tools of social and emotional learning, which means experiential, uh, educational, methodologies that allow kids to express their feelings, to uh, find how to resolve conflict, to, um, to, to, to feel the value of, of being there to close and supportive with others. So this, and this song is the anthem of it. And we did it in Israel, in, in Hebrew yeah. and in, in, in English. And, and this in is, Arabic. Yeah. And in Arabic, yeah. And, 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 you, I want you to bring your guitar up. It's in D if you forget. And I'm going to say one line, then I'm going to tass it. And you say the other one, the next one, the in English or in uh, Hebrew. And people are going to love this because we're going to love it. All right. Uh -huh. here we go. All right. So here it's we called go. The, 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 pro, the project that you brought to Israel and also I think now to the Palestinian Authority is called Operation Respect that people should yes. know. That exactly. is in tens of thousands of schools in this land, in America, and in many other countries. So it's, oh, a, it's, bravo, over, it's a yes. big bravo for you and for Peter, Paul, and Mary for really funding funding it at first and starting it off. And now it's got, you know, the destiny of itself. And it's yeah, yeah, it's in 70% of the schools we started with four. Okay, here, I'm going to do the first line. And, and we, here we go. I'm a little boy with glasses, the one they call a geek. A little girl who never smiles, cause I got braces on my teeth. And I know how it feels to cry myself to sleep. You continue playing. <laughs> פוחדת לחייך בגלל הגשר בשיניים וכך אני נרדם כל לילה עם דמעות בעיניים Don't laugh at me Don't call me names Don't get your pleasure From my pain in God's eyes In God's eyes we're all the same, so Someday we'll all have perfect wings Don't laugh at me I am the beggar on the corner You passed me on the street I wouldn't be out here begging If I had enough to eat And don't think I don't notice Don't think 
like I don't notice that our eyes never meet. And you sing, don't laugh at me, don't call me. Oh, in Hebrew, we're going to sing. Al tilagu li af pa'am ve'al tachivu le'olam Hare kulanu b'nei adam ve'af echad ilo mushlam al tilagu Well, I'm the fat, I'm thin, I'm short, and I'm tall. I'm deaf, I'm blind, hey, aren't we all? I'm black, I'm white, and I am brown. I'm Jewish, I'm Christian, I'm Muslim, I'm Buddhist. I was born in Sarajevo, I was born in Kosovo, I was born in Northern Ireland, in Africa. I'm Hutu, I'm Tutsi, I'm gay, I'm lesbian. I am the American Indian. Born in Iraq, Afghanistan, Sudan, United States of America. I'm very young, I'm aged, I'm very wealthy, and I'm very, very poor. And now you do something on the guitar in this quick key. Get your pleasure. Don't get your pleasure from my pain. In God's eyes. In God's eyes. We're all the same. We're all the same. Someday. Someday. We'll all have perfect wings. Don't laugh at me. Oh my God. See the arrow. This is called, this is called uh, transcending the COVID divide. <laughs> <laughs> Confusing <laughs> the enemy. <laughs> yeah, that's right. But that's, you see, there's something, we, we, there's a little bit of a struggle here. Life, you know, you say, well, life, it's, you know, you hear the term, life is struggle. Because if, you, if everything's determined for you, the beauty of life and the, and the, and the sense of your empowerment is taken away from you. Right. If, if you have to create these moments, you are in a compact with however you describe it to be the higher power or God or, or, or gods or whatever. So we, that's what we're doing here. And we're doing it in the, love in the time of COVID. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Nothing can take that away from us. That's Nothing. right. So I, I think I think that we're thinking about post post COVID where we're going. We where it's going to be about education and it's going to be about intimacy and loving each other. And a tool for doing this is epitomized in the work that you're doing. And when we said we were going to do this uh, program together, um, it ran through my mind that this is a time to kind of say, don't just talk about it you know experience it. It. yeah so we're doing it. i agree how sweet yeah. how wonderful so i think there were questions that we're going to line up some questions for us. oh yeah 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 i don't know if we have time but gabby yes we do have some time and oh good. yes and if if i may just jump in there for a second yeah. Um, there is lots of love coming both of your ways, number one, <laughs> in the Q&A box. Yes. Thank you. And uh, one of the questions that has been asked is also, um, 
is the question of up oh, a second if if david if you will be making a cd of your liturgical music yes when when i'm when i'm ready it'll take a few more months but most certainly uh most certainly before the before everybody's been vaccinated i will have that thing ready and recorded that's a commitment so i know it's going to take some time so yeah and another question was if there will be access to the concert, David, that you gave last week in Israel. Good question. Um, I should take care of that because I think it was on Facebook for, for a while, but I'm not sure if it's still on. And I should probably get a link because it's been uh, Israel uh, National TV put it on a couple of times. So it might be there, where I think, in the, United, in the States or in the New York area. It's, it's what's uh, Channel 14. But I should... I should um, find a link for it and have everybody who wants to see it get the access to it. So it's a good point. Thank you. Great. And and there is one more question um, from one of our guests who had just started taking beginner guitar lessons as an adult this fall, and she and he she loves playing guitar to endure the isolation of the pandemic and wants to know. <laughs> if your heart guitars are available for sale as well. Absolutely, they are. And as a matter of fact, when you buy the guitar, the money that, that, is, you know, that you're paying goes to give another guitar away to a child. So the profits are, are, enable us to get another guitar to another child. And the guitars are available in what is called Rudy's Guitar Store on, uh, on Broom Street. And if you look them up, Rudy's guitar store, um, you can order it from them. And it's very affordable. Right. And, and we can we can include a link in the follow up email. Okay. Great. Yes. Uh, and then we also have Fernando, who is asking what you miss most from being on the road? Being able to perform for a live audience to to get to feel the audience, to present my music and share this great emotion that that I have and and passion that I have for for the music that I, that I play and share it with uh, with a live audience you know um, there's nothing that nothing that is any second to it nothing and then we, we have another question asking uh, about if there are any stories that you'd be willing to share about the photos behind you oh well, I forget the name of the photographer. These are from Africa, from the 60s. Um, he exhibited in, in Paris, I think, about a couple of years ago. Is it, is there, I, I'm not even sure if he's alive still. Um, shame on me that, I, that his name escapes me, but as a very well-known African photographer from, um, I think it's from Mali. And uh, he, he photographed all these personalities in his studio. And everybody had an idea of how they want to be portrayed, and what kind of portrait. And they all, you know, some wanted to look like Elvis, others wanted to look like, you know, other rock stars and personalities from the West. And it's very, it's endearing and it's beautiful. Very intimate moments with people who are anonymous, really. Great, thank you. And then there is one more thing that has been echoed by many asking if we can maybe close out because unfortunately it's time to you know leave this but if it would be possible to close out with a little bit of the liturgical music that you would be able to share so i'm unfortunately i'm i'm not as well rehearsed on that music it's still being created and so let's wait for the next time and i promise to to present all of it um i have a piece of liturgical music we can oh, do you do yeah, let's do that one. I'll do the first line. Right. How many roads must a man walk down before they call him a man? How many seas must a white dove sail? How many seas 
sails must a white dove sail before she sleeps in the sand yes and how many times must the cannon balls fly before they're forever banned the answer my friend is blowing in the wind the answer is blowing in the wind let me take the next one kama shani mitstare khod lamu lifnei shenilma ekh lichyot vekama namshikh lechako lashalom im zai shtei kharavo ira and how many times can a man turn his head and pretend that he he just doesn't see the answer my friend is blowing How many times must a man look up before he can see the sky? How many ears must one man have? And how many ears must one man have before he can hear people cry? How many deaths will it take till he knows? Many deaths will it take till he knows that too many people have died? The answer, my friend. The answer, my friend. Is blowing in the wind is blowing in the wind. The answer, blowing. And now the guitar in the key of C. David, play us something on the guitar in the key of C. It's as good. It's as good in a certain way. You know, if we could, if we actually, if we had just had a little glass of wine together oh, yeah. while we were doing this, I'd say, I hung out with David. <laughs> I hung out with you. Know, it's, <laughs> it's not. It's not. It's a very. Uh, it's you know. It's it is turning a sow's ear into or it is. Weaving the sunshine out of the falling rain. Take that falling rain and turn it into yeah. the sunshine. I agree. Beautiful. Yeah. I feel great now. Thank yeah, you. Me too. I love it. I love you. I love you. <laughs> Ode to love. Yeah, absolutely. So, Gabby, thank you so much. Oh, man, you have no idea. I mean, I have goosebumps, and I know that everybody in our audience feels the same. This was such a gift and such a, a wonderful sharing, and we cannot thank you enough. And and, and what a way to you know spend Zoom time. You know? Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Almost as good as being all together 
Uh, it was wonderful. Thank you, everybody, for joining. As I said, you, we will send out tomorrow the follow-up email, and we'll put uh, all of the links that were discussed will be in that email. Thank you again, David. Thank you, Peter, for making this such an incredible hour and a bit. And we really, really appreciate it. And we hope to see everybody again soon at one of our next events. Thank you. Bye-bye. 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 <laughs>